Wishing a good eve to the creepies and crawlies Shrieking a melody just to hear the wind I know what the woods had in mind So till next time at the tree line I'll be fine Hey friend, Chris here from WhyLogicProRules.com. In the second video in our three-part walkthrough of the amazing Symphony desktop interface from Apogee, we're going to cover the details of how to get set up recording a multi-track recording situation thanks to the optical ports on the interface. How easy it is to get all set up with a secondary interface, but not only that, how you can use the DSP built-in effects for printing and monitoring on the optical ports as well and right from your DAW thanks to the channel linked effects plugin. Okay, so let's get started getting set up for a multi-track drum recording session using the optical ports on the Symphony desktop and also the DSP print and monitor effects. Because the DSP effects are not just dedicated to only the analog inputs, but also can be used for the optical inputs as well. As you can see, I don't have a project open quite yet and that's on purpose. We're first gonna navigate to the Apogee Control 2 app. Up until now, we haven't examined the separate software mixer app at all because we really didn't have a reason to. But just like the plugin, just like the interface itself, you can control everything about the interface from this separate control app if you'd like to. So starting with the analog one and two inputs. So these are the combi jack XLR quarter inch inputs on the interface. We have level meters for each one. You can also adjust the analog level being plugged into the interface depending on what kind of device you're plugging into the interface whether it be a microphone or professional analog gear or consumer gear or also an instrument. You can also choose between the different alloy preamp models. We can also choose to enable print or monitor effects just by clicking on the effects tab or within the window right here. And you can enable or disable the entire effect chain on the monitor or print path. And of course, we have input settings for phantom power, soft limit, polarity, and also grouping analog one and two. Then we have the optical ports, which obviously they don't have input settings because these are preamps that exist on a second interface that will be plugged into the Symphony desktop. But just like with the analog inputs, you can also set up plugins for print or monitor, and you can enable or disable them within this plugin view or from the channel strip. And every single channel passing through the Symphony desktop can be adjusted in terms of its monitoring level from this fader. And you have two views, Mixer 1 or Mixer 2. And you can even stereo link different channels together. So in this case, Optical 1 and 2 are going to be a stereo pair because I'm going to be recording a set of overhead microphones. The main reason I wanted to show you the Control app is because I have plugins already enabled on each of the channels for my drum recording. Channel one is dedicated to the kick drum, but I'm actually going to trash each and every one of these plugins. Now you would think this would be a problem because I plan on opening a Logic project. I have all of my plugins all set up and ready to go for recording multi-track drums, but not so because right over here, the channel link settings for each of the Apogee channel effects plugins is set to keep the DAW effects settings. So when we open the Logic project, the template for our drum recording, every one of the channels will defer to whatever plugins and settings I had set up in that template or project. Let's do that right now. So I'm gonna open up this project. We'll take a second to open the project and then we'll see that those effects that I removed from the kick drum will be on that instance of the channel effects plugin. They'll be re-instantiated for that channel. Cool, you can see we have a kick drum, snare, overheads. We have yet to record. And if we open the mixer, Logic has a really handy feature where it offloads any plugins that are not in use at the moment. There's no audio on the track lane, so we have no reason to have these plugins powered up. But just by clicking through the different channel strips, these plugins will start to load. So they're available for recording. And with that kick drum mic that we had right over here, if we open the channel effects, booyah, we have all of our plugins on the monitor path with their settings. If we flip right through, there's the mod comp and also the ECS channel strip. And if we return to the control app and open up the monitor effects, there they are, beautiful. So the point being that you can set up a recording template with the Symphony desktop and everything is loaded and ready to go 
if you have the channel link function enabled. So I have this channel link function enabled specifically for the purpose of recording and being able to control every aspect of the inputs in Logic Pro as I'm recording. Of course, we could see the DSP load at 87%. I'm using a number of plugins on each one of these channels. And we have a total of 10 channels that are going to be recorded. Kick drum and snare on inputs one and two, then a pair of overhead mics, snare bottom, rack tom, floor tom, hats. And I'm also using the talkback microphone on the Apogee Ensemble for a drum room microphone. So for the overheads, that would be optical one and two. How do you get set up with a secondary interface with the Symphony desktop? It is so easy. One of the great things about the Symphony desktop is that unlike most interfaces, you don't have to set the Symphony desktop's clock from the internal clock to an external clock, which would be our secondary interface connected via the optical port. Thanks to the transparent clock conversion, you can just leave both interfaces set to their internal clocks and the Symphony desktop will take care of everything. But of course, if you prefer to use the interface instead of the control app or even the plugins in your DAW, we can access everything related to the optical ports right from the interface. So if we click on what looks like kind of a little double square in the left-hand corner, that's indicative of the optical ports. Look at that, we can flip through inputs one through four and see everything related to those inputs in optical input five through eight as well. So let's go back to maybe optical four here. We'll click on the monitor effects. And you can see the monitor effects in this path. Click on the EQ, so we have the mod EQ, or we can switch to the mod comp. And there's several pages to use as well or to choose from to work with. I actually own the Apogee Ensemble as well, so I'm going to be connecting that to the Symphony desktop via the ADAP port or optical port. And that's the way we're gonna be recording these drums. Let's go ahead and record these drums and then compare the monitor effects both off and on after we're done recording. To in a Wishing a good eve to the creepies and crawlies. Shrieking a melody just to hear the wind. I know what the woods had in mind. So till next time. Okay, we've gone ahead and recorded these drums. We have plugins on every single channel strip here, but through the monitor effects. And again, these effects are not just in the app while you're recording. You'll also hear these effects played back in your sessions as well. Cool, so let's take a listen to the drums in the mix a little bit, and then we'll do a before and after where I'll bypass the plugins and then reintroduce them. Take a listen real quick. Wishing a good eve to the creepies and crawlies. Shrieking a melody just to hear the wind. So it sounded pretty good to me. Let's now bypass the plugins. Take a listen and then we'll bring them back. Here we go. Okay, and then back with them. And I can continue to listen to my tracks through these plugins off of the DSP on the interface, or I can use the native versions of the plugin. So if I don't have the interface connected, or if I decide to offload the processing just by turning off the channel link function, then the plugins inside the channel effects defer to the native versions that I own on my Mac system. So I can take this session with me. All I need is an iLock. All right, in the next and final video, let me show you how to get set up with reverb and delay, send and returns in Logic Pro in the DAW with the Symphony desktop so that you have those effects, not just when you're recording, not just when you're listening back, but in all situations. See you for more in the next video.